Hello Berkey Academy followers. I'm coming back for a third part to my two-stage least squares videos. In the first part I showed you how you can calculate uh, two-stage least squares estimates sort of by hand. We went through each of the two stages and showed you how it worked. And then in the second video I showed you how to use an automatic um, program in R or in an add-on package called SEM, uh, su Simultaneous Equation Modeling, and then the command is TSLS for two-stage least squares, and showed you how to do it a more automatic way. In the first video, I made a mistake, which is great because we get to come back and fix it and, and show you what I was, was not telling you then. And now I'll, I'll go, go a little further and show you um, something else that you need to know. Basically in the first video when you do the two stages in the first stage you're creating an instrument in that case it was a predicted price, a p-hat that we put into a model and then in the second stage we were able to get the correct estimates. The problem is that um, the standard errors that you get in the second stage are going to be wrong and there's no way around that but you've got to take a couple of extra steps to fix it and so if you're interested in really knowing how this works this video is for you. So let's get started and, and look real quickly at what we did in the first video in R. Oh, As an added bonus let me just give you a chance to look here. Um, I'm going to show you also how to use the um, what we're going to talk about today to fix standard errors if you have heteroscedasticity in a two-stage least squares model. And so you have to know all this in order to do it. So let's go ahead and get started um, back in R. And let me show you what my mistake was and how we can fix it. So um, in the second stage, let's see, do a summary of TSLS2 is what I called that. In the second stage, remember we had a regression of quantity, this is a demand equation, on p-hat and disposable income. So this is our instrument. And these slopes are the correct slopes. This is why you do the two-stage least squares. The problem is that these standard errors are wrong. And if those standard errors are wrong, these t-statistics are wrong, and these p-values are wrong. And so we're going to have to figure out how to fix that. And it's not all that complicated. Now. A mistake I made in the um, in the first video was to tell you that uh, I, I misled you to think that these standard errors were going to be exactly correct. Let's look at what the correct standard errors look like. If you use this automatic function in R in the library, let me go ahead and load, load that library, library SEM, simultaneous equation modeling, and then we do a summary of TSLS3 is what we called it in the second video. Let's pay attention to what the difference is between these standard errors up here and these standard errors down there. The standard errors we get in the second stage, doing it by hand, these wrong ones up top, are too big. The correct ones are smaller. And what you can't really tell without getting a calculator and doing this is that all of these standard errors are all smaller and these are these are the correct ones and they're all smaller by exactly the same proportion and that proportion turns out to be 0.8844 so if you take these wrong standard errors that we get in the second stage doing it by hand multiply all of them by 0.8844 you get the correct standard errors now the automatic function does all this by uh, kind of automatically for you so you don't have to worry about it. However, we're doing this for two reasons. Reason number one is if you really want to understand how two-stage least squares works, you need to do everything by hand at least once. Second reason, if you have heteroscedasticity and you want to do something like a whites correction, you need to understand how to do all this by hand in order to use White's correction because White's correction is going to be incorrect also by the same you know 
factor of 0.884. It's what we call a correction factor for two stage least squares. Let me run through why these standard errors in the second stage are wrong real quickly and run through a little four step procedure of how you can correct them if you're doing this by hand. So from the multicollinearity video um, for Berkey Academy Econometrics, we spent a lot of time talking about this formula about how those standard errors are actually calculated to begin with. And we calculated some standard errors by hand. Now, our, all statistics programs calculate these for you anyway, but you need to know where these numbers are coming from. So if you look at how a standard error is calculated, I won't review where all this comes from. I just want you to focus on the top part right here. The top part is, I've copied that part of the formula right here. The top is just the square root of the sum of the residuals squared. So it's the square root of the sum of squared residuals. Now, so I don't have to say all that a hundred times in this video, let's just call that root SSR. So this is the root sum of squared residuals, root SSR. Now, in this second stage, when you're doing these regressions by hand, where are those residuals coming from? Remember, a residual is a prediction error. It's the actual value of the dependent variable minus the predicted value of the um, dependent variable. Problem, in this second stage when we're doing it by hand, those residuals that R is calculating, see this list of residuals right here, those residuals are not really the residuals. Because when it calculates the residuals, it's going to take the dependent variable, the quantities, and it's going to subtract off the predicted value of the quantity. But instead of using the price, it's going to use this instrument price. It's not really the, the real price. And so the predictions are going to be wrong. And so the residuals are going to be wrong. So in the second stage, when you're calculating these residuals, um, it should be the yi minus the y hat i, which is yi minus, you know, the y-intercept and the slope times the actual values. But as I said, instead of using the real explanatory data, at least for some of those variables, you're using the instrument. In this case, it's that p hat. So we're going to have to go back and calculate the um, residuals the right way. So we're going to have to go back and do that by hand to see what should the sum of squared residuals be and then take the square root of it. So we're going to have to correct, calculate the correct root sum of squared residuals. So here's the all the steps that you need to go through and we're going to go through these in just a second so you can see how this works. Step number one we need to know what the wrong sum of squared residuals are from the second stage so that we can compare how large are those wrong sum of squared residuals to what the correct ones should be. So once we have the wrong SSR, second, let's calculate the correct SSR, the correct sum of squared residuals using the, the real data. Third, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the ratio of the correct root SSR over the incorrect root SSR. What we're trying to do here is to figure out, again, let's look at the standard error formula up here. If this is how standard errors should be calculated, but we are using the wrong number on the top right here, right? So for this part of the formula, we're using the wrong number. We need to figure out by how much is this top part of the formula wrong. And if, if we figure that out, kind of that ratio of how wrong, how far off is that, then we can just multiply the standard errors we get by this correction factor. Once we know how far off it is. Is it off 10% or 20% or 28% for example? So 
after we take the ratio of the root sum of squared residuals for the correct divided by the incorrect, this is what we call the standard error correction factor. Then we go back to our second stage results and we multiply our standard errors by this correction factor. Okay? So seeing is believing. Seeing is believing. Let's go and actually do this. Okay, so the first step, our first step was to figure out what is the wrong sum of squared residuals from our second stage. There are a couple of ways to do this. Let me do it both ways really quickly. Um, way number one is to um, just calculate the sum of the residuals. So sum resid and give it the name of the regression and the name of the regression we're looking at the two the second stage so two stage um, least squares two is what we called that second stage we want to get the sum of the squared residuals so here is the residuals from the second stage caret two to square them and then we're going to add them up okay so let's hit enter now this tells us that the sum of the squared residuals, these, these are the wrong ones, is 84.02247. Okay, those are the incorrect sum of squared residuals. Another way to do it, um, just for a shortcut for people who uh, really want to, to get into R, is you can just type deviance and then TSLS2. And this will give you the same thing. It's uh, an automatic function that will calculate the sum of the squared residuals for, for a, regress a regression. It's called the deviance. So these are the incorrect sum of squared residuals. Now our second step, calculate the correct sum of squared residuals using explanatory data rather than instruments. Okay. Well, what's the formula for a residual? It's the yi minus the y-intercept minus slope times x1 minus and we just keep doing that to get the uh, residual so yi minus the the y hat now if we look at our correct uh, here's our correct intercept correct slope for p hat or price actually and our correct slope for disposable income these are what we need to put into a formula to calculate the real residuals. Instead of using p hat, we want to use the actual price. Okay? So, we're going to need that original data set, the Cominta data set. So, I'm going to have to attach that. Attach Cominta. And now, I'm going to have to type in a formula to calculate the real sum of squared residuals and so let's um, let's give these a name so let's call this the uh, correct s s e equals okay so what do we want to do we want to take the real quantity minus the predicted value and so let me put the predicted value in parentheses here. And we're going to use the y-intercept, so 94.633 minus 0 0.2436, 0 0.2436 times p, and then plus 0 0.3140 times d. So we have the actual minus the predicted right here and we want to square those so the actual minus the predicted is the uh, residuals we want to square those and then we're going to want to sum those up so sum and I'm going to have to add another set of parentheses here to get all that so we're getting the sum of squared residuals using p instead of p hat so let me hit enter here now what is the correct SSE? It tells us that instead of the 84.02247 that we got, the sum of squared residuals should be 65.72652. And so now we can calculate our correction factor. 
which is the square root, it's the ratio of the square roots of the sum of squared errors. And so we want to put the correct on the top and the incorrect on the bottom. And so this correction factor, let's call this uh, correct fact one equals the square root of 84.0200 Two, four, seven on the top divided by the square root of this 65.72652 on the bottom and that correction factor is oop, correct fact one. Oh, sorry I put the incorrect on the top rather than on the bottom I apologize okay let's clean this up real quickly here divided by uh, 84.02247 okay and so the correct correction factor is 0.884486 what do we do with that well what we need to do is take that 0.8844 and for each of these incorrect standard errors, the 8.9, the 0 0.109, and the 0 0.053, we need to multiply those standard errors by that correction factor, the 0 0.8844. And if you do, you will get these standard errors that R spits out using the automatic two-stage least squares method. Why not just use the automatic method? Well, here's the added bonus. Suppose we had heteroscedasticity and we needed to use White's correction. Now some fancy econometrics packages have a two-stage least squares command that will allow you to also build in a White's correction. I'm not aware of one in R that allows you to do that. That doesn't mean there isn't one, but I'm, I'm not aware of, a, aware of a package. So if you had heteroscedasticity, Understanding how to calculate this correction factor is critical because here's what you would do. Suppose we knew we had heteroscedasticity that we needed to correct, and we, you would have to do this by hand, as far as I'm aware. Somebody probably has some code somewhere to do all this automatically. What you would do is in the second stage, you would run White's correction on it. And so see my heteroscedasticity videos if you want to know um, about this command that I've programmed in to do a white correction. But here's what you would do. You would do um, a white correction on the second stage, TSLS2, and it would correct the standard errors for heteroscedasticity, but these standard errors are still wrong because they were calculated using the wrong root sum of squared residuals. However, now that you understand this correction factor, we can take these standard errors that have been corrected for heteroscedasticity, multiply them by the correction factor of 0.8844 in this case, and voila! Heteroscedasticity is solved and we've corrected our standard errors for the fact that R is not using the right root SSR. Now, keep in mind that after you do this, you're going to have to not just correct your standard errors, but you're going to have to go ahead and correct your t-statistics, um, because now your coefficient divided by your standard error is going to give you a new t-stat, and you're going to have to look up those t-stats and calculate new p-values. So that's it for this edition of Two Stage Least Squares. Go practice this and make sure you understand it. See you later, uh, next time.